Here we're going to take a look at this side-by-side uh, -side choice on this jump right here, on the back side of that jump. And uh, I'm jumping my dog low because this is the end of the training session. He was getting pretty tired. We can see that with the serpentine over the jump here, we get one more stride in from the dog because he realizes that he is uh, needing to come in here. I'm in his space. And on this side over here, where we're going to the outside, he's able to stay in extension. Of course, he has further to go. So as we scroll through here, we can still see that the effort required to make this little going through the gap here, it takes some time versus being able to stay in extension and then turn. But of course, the dog that does this loop has uh, less distance to go to get into the tunnel versus this dog. But what we're going to find is it's going to be nearly identical for this dog at this height. So maybe on the order of a couple of hundredths of a second difference, but pretty much identical. Now we're going to take a look at a dog that's jumping 26 inches and with some slightly different handling. So we can see here where Esteban is going to go to this wing, he's going to do a front cross. He's going to try to get out of her way and still keep her in extension. And I think he does. But this is a dog that on wraps Instead of getting a complete, you know, loop-de-loop -loop here, what she tends to do is get to the back side, take this at a slice, and then turn on the flat. So you get sort of like a triangle shape there. So we can see that even though she knows where she's going and she's racing to catch up, she's going to land well over here on this jump. And that's going to put her a little bit behind on that path. So for this dog, at this height, we're looking at maybe a third of a second difference. 